Kelly, thank you so much. Fosnar Simmons, thanks for being with us on this virtual ASCO day. You guys were the talk of the weekend at the conference with a prostate cancer drug you have there, which uses sort of a new technology harnessing really uh, radiation, but in a targeted way to treat advanced prostate cancer. Tell us about what this treatment does and what you hope it'll accomplish in prostate cancer. Yeah, thanks a lot, Meg. We've made investments in a technology called radioligand therapies. And what these technologies enable us to do is take specific molecules that target solid tumors like prostate cancer. We link those uh, molecules with radioactive particles, and that allows us to target radiation in micro doses right at the cancer. Now, this is the second impressive readout we have. We already have an approved drug called Lutathera in neuroendocrine tumors. But this was an important milestone for us because now it shows us that this technology can be applied perhaps in multiple solid cancers. So the data we, we showed on Sunday was in late lines of prostate cancer, an impressive overall survival benefit, an impressive uh, effect on progression-free uh, survival as well. And we plan to take this medicine called LUPSMA to earlier lines of prostate cancer over the years to come. So and it was a really exciting day for us and a validation of this platform where we're clearly the global leader. So earlier lines of prostate cancer is one potential application of the technology. Are there other cancers in which it could potentially work? I understand that you have to figure out that marker to be able to target this payload of radiation really specifically. Where else could it potentially work? Well, they, we've been able to really build with a series of licensing deals, a range of different compounds now that we're taking into other solid tumors. These solid tumors range from various forms of lung cancer, various brain cancers. Uh, we're, we're also looking at other solid tumor types. We haven't disclosed all of our targets as a competitive space, but we already have multiple phase two trials ongoing. Uh, we signed three deals in quarter two to bring in more of these markers, which we think uh, will enable us to, uh, to really move quickly into solid tumors. What's exciting about this technology is you treat what you see. So first we give a biomarker and we can light up the body to see where is the tumor. And then we treat and see, can we reduce the tumor? And that speeds up drug development as well. So I, we believe it's gonna open up a whole new era of solid tumor treatments. Hmm. Well, you're mentioning biomarkers, and I have to ask you, although we are talking on ASCO Cancer Research Day, this decision from the FDA about the Biogen Alzheimer's drug is just massive for the entire industry. I mean, really establishing this new pathway for uh, approving an Alzheimer's drug based on clearing the plaques from the brain under accelerated approval. I wonder for Novartis, which is also working in neuroscience and many different diseases, do you see this as an important decision for the industry and in showing a sort of flexibility or creativity um, from the FDA and what has been a very controversial decision here on this Alzheimer's drug? You know, Meg, first it's important to recognize that neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's are absolutely devastating for these patients. And as you noted, it's been decades since we've had meaningful progress against many of these diseases. One area we're focused on is Huntington's disease, we have a phase 2B uh, program that's about to start uh, using an oral uh, RNA splicing agent to target one of, of the biomarkers for Huntington's disease called mutant Huntington protein. And certainly on my mind now is with this new pathway, could we accelerate, if the drug ultimately proves effective in reducing mutant Huntington's protein, could we accelerate the approval of this medicine and ultimately confirm it in confirmatory studies? I think it's a reflection of the immense unmet need in these patient populations that regulators are looking for ways to bring therapeutics forward. And it certainly opens up doors. We have a big neurodegenerative research and development operation and certainly will be putting pens to paper over that or, or at least banging on our computers over the weekend ahead to really think about how we can accelerate our own programs. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.